Mr. Busy by Roger Hargreaves. Mr. Busy. There has never been anybody cute like Mr. Busy. He could do things ten times as fast as ever you or I could. For instance, if he was reading this book, he'd have finished it by now. He lived in a very busy-looking house, which he built himself. As you can see, it had lots of doors and windows. And do you know what it called? Weekend cottage. Do you know why? Because that's how long it took him to build. One fine summer morning, Mr. Busy was up and about bright and early at six o'clock. He jumped out of bed and had a bath and cleaned his teeth and cooked his breakfast and ate his breakfast and read the paper and washed up and made his bed and cleaned the house from top to bottom. By which time it was seven o'clock. Busy, Mister Busy. Now next door to Mister Busy lived somebody who wasn't cute, such a busy person. In fact, he was a very unbusy person, Mister Slow. If he was reading this book, he'd. Read it like this. He'd still be on the first page, and that same fine summer morning at five past seven, when Mister Busy knocked at his door, Mister Slow was fast asleep in bed. He'd gone to bed for an afternoon nap the day before, and somehow hadn't woke up until he heard Mister Busy knocking at his door. Who's that knocking at my door? He called downstairs. "Good morning!" cried Mr. Busy. "Can I come in?" And without waiting for an answer, he went inside. "Where are you?" he called. "Upstairs," came the slow reply. So Mr. Busy went upstairs two at a time. "Good heavens!" he said. "You are still in bed." And he made Mr. Slow get up, and he made his bed for him, and cooked his breakfast for him, and cleaned his house for him. Poor Mr. Slow, he hated to be rushed and fussed. Right," said Mr. Busy briskly. "It's a fine day. Let's go for a picnic." Mr. Slow pulled a face. I. Don't like picnics," he complained. "Nonsense," replied Mr. Busy, and boosted himself around Mr. Slow Kitchen, making up a picnic for the two of them. It took him a minute and a half. "Right," he cried when he finished. "Off you go," and he boosted. Mr. Slow out of his front door, and off they set. As you can imagine, Mr. Busy walks extremely quickly. As you can imagine, Mr. Slow doesn't. So by the time Mr. Busy had walked a mile, do you know how far Mr. Slow had walked? To his own garden gate.
Mr. Biggie hurried back. Come on, he cried impatiently. Hurry up. Hurry up, replied Mr. Slow. Impossible. All right, said Mr. Biggie. We will have a picnic in your garden. Wait a minute, though, he added. The grass needs cutting. Then he rushed back to Weekend Cottage and rushed back again with his lawn mower, and rushed up and cut and down cutting Mr. Slow's lawn. It took him two and a half minutes. It would have taken him two minutes, but he had to mow around Mr. Slow. Who couldn't get out of the way in time? Right," said Mr. Busy. "Picking time." And together on that fine summer day, they had a fine picnic. Well, actually, Mr. Busy had a finer picnic than Mr. Slow because he ate more quickly and had most of food. Mr. Busy scratched out on the grass. That was fun, he said. I like picnics. You do. I don't, said Mr. Slow. Tell you what, went on Mr. Busy, ignoring him. Tomorrow we will go on a proper picnic out in the country. Mr. Slow pulled a face. And went on, Mr. Busy. In order to do what that, and get you out in the into the country, I will have to call for you e earlier than I did this morning. Mr. Slow pulled another face. See you tomorrow, then," said Mr. Busy, and went home and cleaned his house from top to bottom to top. The following morning, Mr. Busy jumped out of bed at five o'clock, and had a bath, and cleaned his teeth, and cooked his breakfast, and ate his breakfast, and read a paper, and wash up, and made his bed, and cleaned the house from top to bottom. By which time it was six o'clock, he went knocked on Mr. Slow's front door. Come on, come on! He cried. Time to be up about picnic day. No reply. Come on! Cried Mr. Busy again. No reply. Mr. Busy went inside and went upstairs three at a time, and into Mr. Slow's bedroom, expecting to find him in bed, but he wasn't. And he wasn't anywhere upstairs, and he wasn't anywhere downstairs. Bother," said Mr. Busy. "I wonder where he got to. Where Mr. Slow had got to was under his bed, hiding. He didn't want to go on any picnic. Naughty, bother," said Mr. Busy again. That means. I will have to go on a picnic on my own. Under his bed, Mr. Slow smiled a slow smile. What a good idea! He said, and went to sleep, snoring very slowly.